Welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. So the strawberries are doing quite well at the moment, even though I didn't think they'd do so well. Today I've picked about um, three kilos of fruit. I've had some of it already, to be honest. Now, when you're picking strawberries, one thing I didn't explain before, what you want to pick is that. So the way I do it is hold the strawberry in my hand and then put your nail through the, um, the centre part, which used to be the flower. And then afterwards, all you need to do is just pull, pull that out of the strawberry afterwards. Don't leave that on. Don't be tempted to leave that on the plant because that uh, will go um, rotten and sort of mildewy, and then it'll send the rest of your strawberries that aren't ripe yet um, bad. So, any any damaged fruit at all, or any overripe fruit, any damaged fruit, take it straight out of the um, of your strawberry bed and uh, um, basically discard it. Take it away from the um, the you know where your main strawberries are. So I expect probably to pick about um, the same amount, um, probably in about two days, looking at the, uh, the strawberries that are coming now. When it comes to picking raspberries, or not strawberries, what you want to do is leave, so I'm just pinching the raspberry, so you leave the, 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 uh, the bits on the inside on the bush. You just pick it, just pinch it, and pull it like that. If when you pinch it, it doesn't come off, it's not ready to pick. So I've finished picking the raspberries. There's about two kilos there in weight. I could probably have picked the same again, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow to pick the rest. So it's at this time of year, now that the parsnips have grown to a reasonable size, you need to thin out so you have a parsnip about every four to five inches. So, as you can see here, this is the row of parsnips. Um, you could have pulled them out a little bit sooner than this, but as you can see, there's two, two quite close together there. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure that's a weed. So that will be the that'll be the first one. That's that strong plant there. So I shall take those two out. Then the next one I'll have one of these here. So these two also need to come out. Then that one will be left to, to grow. So this one here, there's two there, so I need to pull out one of those. And what I'll typically do is pull out the weaker of the two, so I'll take that out, making sure that I don't damage the roots of the one that I'm leaving. So that's one, two, the next one will be here. So I need to take this one out. This one out. So I'm just leaving that one there. So these, these here need to come out. Then the next one will be this one here. So I need to take all of these out. So it does seem a waste because you have all of these that you've nurtured to, to grow, but um, at the end of the day you want them to grow strong and to a nice size. So So they should end up looking something like that. Um, don't expect to get them perfectly uniform as I say. And you end up pulling out something like that which seems a real shame but if you don't do it, um, don't be tempted to leave them in because your, your parsnips won't form properly into uh, nice big ones. But the chickens will definitely thank you for them. It's also time to start tying up the uh, tomatoes again, so the way I do it is where you have a, um, the flowers coming there, which is obviously going to be a fruit truss, um, you need to be careful that your, your string doesn't cut into the tomato, so what I do is tie it once round the cane and pull that nice and tight so it doesn't slip up and down the cane, then go round the main stem twice with both pieces of string and then tie it again in a double reef knot. So then even though it's secure, it's able to move about and you're not cutting into the uh, the main stem with the with the string. So brassicas are a family of um, plants and in that family include these which are kale. Um, we also have um, cabbage, broccoli, um, sprouts, kohlrabi. Um, there's a whole manner of plants which are in the um, brassica family. Even cornflowers are actually in the same family. And um, with, with brassicas, uh, the one thing you need to be careful of is birds absolutely love to eat them. So, I always grow mine, or at least the uh, the ones that I want the leaves from, in a uh, in a tunnel like this, which is basically constructed of um, steel bars and a uh, mesh to go over, basically to keep the birds out. Um, in the second one, you'll see in here, I've got in here two different types of um, brassica. Uh, this is um, broccoli, so on this side here I've got what's called purple sprouting broccoli um, and you crop that um, in the spring, so this will grow all the way through this year and it'll get to about three foot tall, um, possibly higher um, and that will, that will create um, sort of um, buds at the end of the year at the top of the plant, which is the part that you eat, that's the um, you know the part that you see in the uh, the shop. A very very similar um, plant is the uh, the normal broccoli, which is this, which is green. And what this will do is it'll grow in um, in the year, and then you'll crop this sort of late summer, so sort of um, August um, August September time. This will be ready. Now it's a very um, fast growing plant. I mean those ones that I've just seen. Uh, that, you, that you've just seen now, um, they're, um, 
they've only um, been planted um, probably about three weeks. These ones here uh, were planted about two months ago and were actually put out in the ground only around um, only around three weeks ago and as you can see the plants are already uh, probably about 14, 16 inches tall. So obviously in here this, this mesh keeps the birds out, it's, it's that that you need to worry about. The other things that they are prone to is um, aphids, whitefly, um, you need to um, keep your eye open for them. But to be honest with you, I've never really suffered from it. Um, the other thing which is quite devastating is uh, something called clubberit. And this is a disease which lives in the ground and it attacks the bottom part of the, uh, the plant, the roots. And um, basically what happens is, rather than the, the roots growing out like that and getting the food from the ground as they should do, they kind of form into a ball like this. Um, and it's, it's just like one massive um, sort of ball at the bottom. And obviously because the plant hasn't got the roots that it needs, it can't grow properly and therefore the plant typically dies. And you don't um, get a very good crop, if any at all. So if you do have club root in the ground, I'm afraid... Uh, there's no easy cure for it. When I first took on this allotment um, uh, about 10 years ago, um, this whole allotment was um, infected with club root. Um, and there's, there's basically only one way to get completely rid of it. And then um, the only way to get rid of it is not to grow brassicas for about four or five years, uh, which is exactly what I did. Uh, when I first took the allotment on, I grew... Um, um, some cabbage about every six foot all the way down the allotment to see if it was affected um, and unfortunately um, every single plant died through club root so I didn't grow any brassicas at all for about five years which is which is quite devastating because brassicas are about 50% of the plants that I grow. The second way of managing it is to heavily lime the ground. Now brassicas don't mind um, acidic or lime soil um, so what you can do is, is very heavily um, put loads of lime on the ground um, and that tends to um, knock back the, uh, uh, the club root. You can't cure it that way. All it does is it just manages it rather than gets rid of it. But um, if you don't want club root at all, and I, I personally don't like using lime, um, the only thing I can suggest is you don't grow brassicas for about four or five years or grow them. Um, what you can do is, rather than planting them directly into the ground, is grow them in pots in compost and then sink the, the pot into the ground. And then, um, then obviously the plant will grow um, in, the, in the compost rather than the ground and then you won't get club root. The second biggest pest with brassicas are um, a butterfly called cabbage white, which is a white butterfly with um, black spots, one single spot on each wing. You want the net for your protection to be um, small enough so they can't get through. So this stuff's ideal. This is, um, I bought this off the internet and it's what builders put round um, scaffolding to stop any debris falling off. Um, the net that I've got in the other tunnel um, is from a garden centre and I thought that this, this stuff might be a bit coarse. It's about 15 mil um, holes but they don't actually get through that. Um, but to be honest with you, I think uh, if I was to put any more net on here, when I do come to replace this, I'll, re I'll, I'll be replacing it with something more like this green stuff, or, um, well, smaller than this anyway. So look out for cabbage white um, butterflies flying around your brassicas. And if they get onto them, what they'll do is they'll lay eggs underneath the leaves. So you'll find eggs located all underneath the leaves here and basically they'll hatch out into caterpillars which will then eat all of the leaves so if you've got brassicas that look like they've been shot with a, a shotgun and there's holes all over them then you've most certainly got um, the, uh, the cabbage white larvae on there and what you need to do, it's not a very nice task but what you need to do is get underneath the leaves where they'll be, they'll be sort of round here and you need to pull them all off the like obviously caterpillars, sort of furry black caterpillars, you need to pull all them off and dispose of them one way or another. Um, otherwise they'll just literally just keep on eating until there's no brassicas left. So that's the second thing to look out for. The Swedes are also brassicas and these are set directly into the ground which you can do with um, all brassicas 
all brassicas have these very classical heart-shaped leaves and the seeds are all very small black balls like uh, like mustard seed so you can plant them all in directly into the ground um, which is what I do with things like swede etc and kohlrabi or anything like cabbage broccoli um, sprouts um, kale uh, anything like that you're better off planting it in a plant pot um, well what I do is I put all the seed into a tray prick them out as soon as they get to about two inches long into pots and then plant the pots uh, plant the plants out of the pots into the ground which I'll show you now so as I explained this kale um, was planted around three weeks ago and because of the amount of room that it takes up I could have planted this early but because I had the brassicas that you can see in that tunnel there the uh, the broccoli um, I hadn't got the room in the greenhouse so what I normally do is grow the broccoli first put that in then as soon as I've got space in the greenhouse I, I um, grow the um, the kale so to put them in they're all identical um, you can treat them all the same um, when you when you plant them in the greenhouse so to put them in the ground the first thing you need to do is make sure that the ground is clear so these are going to be planted all up here it's recommended that you leave about 24 inches between plants but I tend to plant them a little closer than that because I'm quite exposed here with um, I don't know if you can see but there's open fields over there the wind blows through here quite quite a lot and I find if I plant them a little bit closer like I've done with the broccoli there uh, you can see they're about 14 inches apart and I kind of um, plant the next row sort of um, offset so that so as they grow they support each other so dig the ground uh, what you need to do because the roots aren't particularly um, strong on brassicas what you need to do is then walk all over the ground so the ground is hard you don't want to plant them into loose soil so the ground needs to be quite hard so what I normally do is dig the ground get all the weeds out and then walk over the ground afterwards and then just rough the surface up so you can um, you can actually plant the plants so this is how um, to plant them in the ground so as soon as the plants get to kind of this big you can actually um, put them in a little bit earlier than this but uh, what I tend to do is grow grow them in small pots you don't need to have a massive pot and that's the kind of root system you want. You don't really want them getting any bigger than that uh, before you plant them out. So the first one, the first one will be placed in the corner. Uh, and what I what I do because they tend to fall over um, with the wind, I tend to plant them slightly deeper than they are in the pot. That's only about an inch or so deeper. And then just firm them right in. And what I'll do as soon as they've all been planted, I shall water them in as well. So I. Put them in like that, make sure that they're upright. Now the next one, um, I use the trowel, which is about um, 14 inches. I'll plant the next one here. When you're taking them out of the pots, make sure you don't damage the, um, they're easily snapped off. So what I do is I get these, um, these trays with pots and from Wilco's, they're only about, I think they're about a pound for five. And you can basically just push them out. So I've not touched the plant at all there, all I've touched is basically the roots. Um, and then put that in the hole, like that, and then make sure you give it a really good firming in. Now, what I tend to do is water them in when I first put them in and then leave them, because what you want to do is you want the plant to develop its roots. Um, if you water them a lot, the plant will get lazy and it won't bother developing its roots. Um, and then basically the, it, it'll have much smaller roots in the ground which makes it much more prone to falling over in the wind and also it doesn't get the nutrients out of the um, out of the ground that it should do and doesn't grow as strong so you're better off with these um, not to water too much so that'll be the first row which will, which will carry on the next row will be about here now if you notice if I dig a hole there that's still 14 inches from there and still 14 inches from there, perhaps slightly further over here. So if I put the next one there, like that. Now, these plants are still 14 inches apart, but obviously I've got them, I've got a few more in than perhaps I would do, because if I was putting another row, the row would be here. Um, that I can get them slightly closer together. So 14 inches from there, the next one will go in here 
Now this ground, when I first dug it, um, did have um, chicken meal put in it. So it is very fertile soil. And uh, obviously what you want to do is make sure that you've got plenty of um, goodness in the soil for these because they are fast growing plants. Um, and you want to um, make sure that you've got enough goodness in the soil to keep them going because what you don't want to do is sort of have to come back after with some other fertiliser and uh, sort of water it in or whatever. I always like to get the ground first, that's the, that's the, main, the main thing to get right. So they're all in now. Um, all I've done is just watered them in. And really, unless we have a dry, pa um, dry spell, I, I, I shan't water them again now. Um, these, um, these that I've got next door, the broccoli, they've been watered once since they were in. Um, and that's only because we had a dry spell last week. And as you can see there, you know, sort of 16, 17 inches tall now. Now these, these will very quickly grow and uh, I should imagine I'll be cropping kale off these in the next month or so. So um, from seed to actually cropping off the plant, it's, it's literally six weeks. And if you've not grown kale before, it is a very nice alternative to cabbage uh, because you don't have to cut it all in once. As I say, you know, you can take the leaves off the side and just take what you need rather than having to cut a whole cabbage. Um, the next stage is, as you can see the peas there on the left hand side, I'm going to put another batch of peas up here. Um, these ones haven't been very good, so uh, I'm going to be planting some seeds up the side of these, and obviously the peas um, will grow, and then uh, before the uh, the kale gets to uh, anything else. And apart from that, at the moment, it's just weeding, which is what I've seen to be doing all day. I need to get through all of this here and uh, take the weeds out. Okay, so thank you for watching part two of the June tour of Jim's allotment. Uh, part three will be with you very shortly, um, so watch this space. If you like, dislike, or you'd like to leave a comment, please do that below. Please subscribe, and I shall see you very soon. Thank you for watching Jim's allotment.